Hello friends, this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel. I apologize for my voice. I am sick with a cold, so that's why I sound like this, but I still wanted to get this video out to you guys. It is time to set up for February in my bullet journal, which is currently a traveler's notebook sized notebook from Notebook Therapy. I am using my traveler's company cover for the notebook because I have these nice little canvas pockets and stuff like all these accessories that I like to use with my journal but for just creating the spreads I'm taking it out of the cover just because there is a lot going on and want to simplify it a little bit. It is really cold in Norway right now or at least where I am in Oslo so cold and so much snow and so I wanted to create a theme for February that kind of warms me up a little bit and gets me excited for the spring that will come eventually maybe in like April <laughs> And something that I really enjoy, especially when it's cold, is coffee shops. Like, I love coffee. I know that, like, on a, a scale in the entire world, Norway is almost on top just after Finland when it comes to consuming coffee. But I love going to coffee shops, not just for the drinks, but also because as someone who works from home, it's nice to get out of the house sometimes and work somewhere else. And coffee shops have always been that to me. When I was a student, I would study in coffee shops just to get a bit of a different environment, like not sitting in the library at the university all the time, but getting a different environment it lets you think about things a little bit differently it lets you feel like you are out with people and you're kind of a part of society even if the work that i am doing is pretty solitary <laughs> and also i have a lot of cafe and coffee themed stickers and other stationery and in particular i got these notebook therapy Hinoki into the cafe pet tapes and stamps and stickers that I wanted to use. So for February I just went all out with the warm brown tones and just all the good coffee shop feels. And you might also notice that I normally do like solo piano for my background music in my videos but I chose more like smooth jazz for this one because that really reminds me of going to cafes. Especially going to cafes in Japan, they always play the jazzy music and jazz covers of pop music and stuff so it's just helping you feel like you're also in a cafe as you're watching this. <laughs> Maybe you are watching it in a cafe, what do I know? <laughs> Instead of doing a lot of drawing in this setup, I am making collages more or less with all of the stationery that I have that is kind of cafe themed and also my own stickers that I made for my patrons this month. I will warn you right now that a lot of the pieces I'm using for the collages is stuff that either you guys have sent to me or other pen pals have sent to me. And so I don't know necessarily where they are from, but I do suspect that a lot of it can be found on AliExpress. This receipt stamp that I used here on the cover page, for example, I'm pretty sure I got that on AliExpress. It's a coffee shop receipt, kind of. It's for a cappuccino that cost 128 yen or 154 with taxes, which is cheaper than any cappuccino I ever had, but you know, maybe once upon a time. I'm also using ripped pieces from old book pages and I'm using the wooden stamps from notebook therapy and also all of the little pet stickers that I'm putting down those are from the Hinoki into the cafe pet tapes I will show you a little bit later on in the video how I cut them out with collage designs like this there's a limit to how much planning you can do ahead of time to be honest at least for me and so this page I pretty much just winged it. I knew that I wanted this particular piece in there, the one that I'm gluing in right now. I knew that I wanted to use that because it has the perfect brown shade which is very similar to the ink pad that I'm using for my stamps. The ink pad is uh, from Versafine and it's the vintage sepia. It's perfect for themes like this. But I also knew that I wanted to use these two girls that are sightseeing in a new town with their takeout coffees because this is the 
vinyl sticker that I drew for my patrons and then I also made a sticker sheet with it so that they could have both a paper version and a vinyl version and I used the paper version here because I like how the colors turn out on the paper version a little bit more than the vinyl. They turned out a little bit darker on the vinyl sticker than on the paper sticker. I added a ton of things to this spread and if you've been with me for a while there was an April I think a couple of years ago where I was doing a cherry blossom theme and and I was just gluing so much stuff down on the page. It was probably the busiest cover page I ever did. And I mean, both in a good and a bad way. I like how it turned out, but it was definitely really busy and it definitely went overboard. And this cover page feels quite similar to that, although I think it's a little bit less busy. At least I did my best and I think I think that I like it and it has very subtle gold details from the pet tape that I really like. And for the title I decided to use some silicone stamps, most of all because I didn't really know how I would do a nice hand lettering that would fit the theme and the page and where all of the components were and I didn't want it to be too small either so that's why I went with the stamps. And the stamps are actually from Michaels in the US so if you have a Michaels around you can find these typewriter silicone stamps. I really like them. And that's it for the cover page really. It's quite busy but I like it. It feels very calm. I think with these brown tones you can't really go wrong. And it reminds me of coffee which is exactly what I wanted when I set out to make these spreads. So now we can move on to the next spread which will be my calendar. I talked a little bit about this in my January plan with me video but because I have started to use this traveler's notebook size notebook. It is quite different in size from what you would think of as a regular notebook, which would usually be an A5 or maybe even a B5 size notebook. This one is a lot slimmer, so when you open it up, it's almost the perfect square. So making my usual layouts work in this notebook is a little bit difficult and I'm experimenting a lot, like trying to figure out what type of calendar layout works the best, what I, what kind of weekly layouts I like. So, so far it's, it's still pretty much a, a big experiment, but for February I went with a larger calendar than I made for January. For January I felt like I didn't have enough room to write. Not that I had so much to write in the calendar, but the few things that I wanted to write down I felt like I didn't have, I didn't have enough width for the whole word, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I made the calendar a little bit larger this time, but to be honest, like with this theme, I think it would have looked nicer, a little bit smaller, maybe a different type of calendar, like a list or something like that. But this is what I did and this is what we have to work with. <laughs> One thing is for sure though, I will have more room to write in this calendar. So at least I succeeded with that. I decided to do what I would consider pretty minimal decorations on the spread. Like I did a little collage in the bottom right corner and then I'm also doing something in the top left corner because that's where there's really room for it. But most of the decoration on this spread is actually stickers from that pet tape I mentioned earlier, the Hinoki one from Notebook Therapy. Because I used the daily stickers for daily headers, I used numbers for the week numbers, and to cut out all of the smaller designs on the pet tape, I am using a cutting mat and my X-Acto knife and I am just cutting out all of the stickers and then I use my tweezers to peel them off of the backing when I want to use them. I don't cut out all of the designs, only the ones that I want to use. Before I would mostly use scissors to cut out the designs and then peel them off. And in a way it's faster to cut with scissors than with an X-Acto knife and obviously with scissors you don't need a cutting mat. But for peeling them off it's a lot easier <laughs> to use this method with the X-Acto knife and the tweezers because it's so much easier to peel. I can't take credit for this technique though because I did receive a very nice tip about this method and a suggestion to try it out and now I don't know if I will ever go back to cutting with scissors and then 
peeling with my nails, especially because I wear a lot of press on nails and so they are thicker than my actual nails. And so peeling, like getting my nail in between the backing paper and the, the sticker part is really difficult with press on nails. X-Acto knives are also really great for cutting washi tape when you've already put it on the page, for example. So if you are really into crafting or journaling and you don't have an X-Acto knife, you should totally get one. They're also sometimes marketed as um, like hobby knives or crafting knives. They're just very small, not like a box cutter. They're like a lot smaller than that, like the blades are smaller. And you can exchange the blade, so whenever it gets dull, you just switch out the blade. They're super convenient, so yeah, if you don't have one, you should definitely look into getting one. Also, another tool that I've been loving since I got it is the tweezers. <laughs> I love these tweezers. They're just regular tweezers usually used for like nail art and stuff like that. So they have a slight bend to it and they're like really long and skinny and I really like them. I got them in the like nail polish, nail art section of a department store. So you can probably find them anywhere, maybe even at your local grocery store. For all of my lines in this setup, I'm using the Copic multi-liners in the color Sepia. So those are the pens that I used to make my calendar and also write the dates in the calendar, for example. One thing that I'm doing in this notebook that I don't normally do is I have tabs for each month because I got the Into the New Year stationery set from Notebook Therapy and it came with these like fall leather tabs. So they're, they're really quite thick and I thought, you know, I might as well try using them because I never really use tabs like this in my journals. So I was really excited to put on the February one because that's one more tab that I could put in. They are quite thick and bulky, but I do like the look of them. They have the months in like this gold capital letter font and yeah, they look quite nice. They have the number of the month on the other side. So I put the tabs on the cover page and so it's easy for me to just flip to whichever month I'm in. So far I'm pro tab. Did you see that? I actually dropped the ink pad straight onto the paper and I was <laughs> a little bit upset with myself. I was looking at it for a while and I was like, what do I do with this? Do I skip to the next page? Do I cover it with something? It was kind of in an inconvenient spot because I already had a plan for the spread. In the end, I decided to kind of just ignore it and pretend that it's not there. <laughs> That's what I did. It's not that noticeable. Now that I look at my spread, um, yeah, it's it's fine and it will most likely be covered by writing anyway, so it'll be fine. Basically, I made a little collage at the bottom of this left page because this will be my main task list for the month of February. And so I am making a header that will say tasks list and then uh, the rest of it will just be the writing of the tasks. I'm not sure if it should be task list or tasks list because English is really hard on where to put S's and where to not put S's. In the end, I went for tasks list, which now that I'm saying it a bunch of times, it doesn't sound right, but you know, I, who am I to judge? <laughs> Usually when I am using um, stamps or alphabet stickers for making titles, I will write down the word that I need to write on a separate piece of paper. As you can see here, I used uh, a scrapped thank you card for my patrons. Sometimes I like misspell a name or I can't fit an entire name on there and then I just have to throw it away. So I wrote tasks list on here just so that then I can visualize, okay, which letter is in the middle, uh, so which letter needs to be where on the page, and then I don't have to measure or anything. I just start from the middle of the word, and then I build outwards in both directions. And then I can just look at the word that I've written down so that I know that I'm doing it right, that I'm putting the letters in the right order. <laughs> so the tasks list spread will be pretty much just like this, and then I'll probably have little squares that I can tick off when I've done the different tasks. And then on the right page, I wanted to create a habit tracker, but I felt like in January, I had a habit tracker for six habits. 
I actually couldn't think of a fifth and a sixth thing that I felt like I wanted to track. So I ended up only using four. So I decided for February, I'll just do those four anyway. So I made the layout a little bit different. So instead of doing the calendars, I'm doing more of these like horizontal habit trackers. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that part. I have done it before and I quite like it. So on this spread, I decided to use some of my girl stickers that I've had for a while. Because I do a lot of my own drawings and I like to use a lot of my own stickers that I have drawn, I do tend to kind of hoard these other stickers that I don't get to use as often. So I decided that for my February spread, since the theme is cafes and coffee shops and stuff, I, I would just use any stickers that I have that kind of fit that theme and fit the color scheme and everything. And these girl stickers are really perfect for that. I got these in Japan. They come in these little uh, packets of like a few different designs. I think these ones are from Mindwave, but I could be wrong. I also used a bunch of other stickers and pieces from the Hinoki pet tape again that I've mentioned before. There is this fun little tag that just says Europe on it, which I think is kind of funny. That one is also from Japan. And a lot of the time when you have those like Asian stationery, I would say a lot of the time it's uh, uh, Chinese or Japanese or Vietnamese even. There's a lot of like fun English phrases on them and I quite enjoy it. One of my first memories from when I moved to Japan was like going shopping and suddenly in a store there were these bags and t-shirts that had Swedish writing on them and they basically said, can I borrow your phone <laughs> or stuff like that and I thought that it was so funny and I was probably the only person in my town who understood what it actually meant because most Japanese people can't speak Swedish and I thought that this is just like Europeans or North Americans getting like Chinese characters uh, as tattoos when they have no idea what it means. It's quite funny. I think it's pretty innocent and funny. Now we get to my habit trackers. You can see that I've, I've kind of just measured out or counted the 29 squares that I'll need, like 29 days. And then to make my life a little bit easier, I did mark the 10 and the 20th, the 10th and the 20th <laughs> in each habit tracker so that I don't have to count from one every single time if I'm not sure which day I'm on because they're all different too. All four of them are a little bit different because that's just how it worked with the page with all the decoration and stuff. I really like this fun organic layout so I don't really mind that they're different from each other or that it's not uniform or perfectly balanced or anything. So I really enjoy this type of page. Now the next spread that I wanted to make is a little bit different and it's just for fun and it's mostly because of the theme that I chose. I don't often make theme based spreads in my monthly setups. I tend to focus on the planning side of things but this time, because the theme is coffee shops, I thought it would be fun to do a theme that is centered around coffee shops. Or in other words, my favorite coffee shops. So I decided to just take this one spread to be a little bit silly and do something useless but fun. You know, I love doing useless things that are fun because I think that we need to do stuff that doesn't make sense or doesn't serve a productive purpose sometimes because we all need more hobbies and less side hustles. <laughs> so this spread is going to be about my favorite coffee shops here in Oslo. And then on the right side, I'm doing a little coffee menu, which is based off of one of the sticker sheets that come in the Hinoki into the cafe sticker pack because I couldn't see myself using those stickers in any other way. So I decided to just make my own little coffee shop menu, but I am getting a little bit ahead of myself here because we're still working on the favorites list. I didn't actually fill it in while I was setting this up because I think I'm gonna take February and kind of challenge myself to go to more different 
coffee shops instead of going to the same ones over and over again. I tend to go to coffee shops that are closer to me because it is so freaking cold, like I've said before. And so I don't really want to walk for half an hour, you know, to get to a coffee shop or get on the bus or the tram, especially with all this snow, you never know when they're gonna stop working. So yeah, in February, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to visit more different coffee shops because my favorites are usually the independent ones, the ones that aren't the, a chain coffee shop. There are so many different vibes and different types of coffees, different specialties, and there is a lot of good coffee here in Oslo. I already know of a few coffee shops that will definitely make the list, but I'm wondering if I'll also go to some places that I've never been to before and test out some, some new coffee shops, see if some of those might become one of my favorites. Since I already used my alphabet stickers for my task list and my habit tracker, I decided to use it on this spread as well. I am actually, like I have a lot of these alphabet sticker sheets that I use, they're from my own shop, but the ones that I use are the reject ones, so the ones that aren't perfectly aligned, those are the ones that I use for myself, because I want you guys to be able to have the nice ones in the shop, and then all of the skewed ones, or like the miscut ones, I use those, because I want to use alphabet stickers, but I don't want to like take the nice ones away from the shop because I, I never make that many of them. But yeah, I have them in so many colors now. So if you're interested in alphabet stickers, then I'll put a link in the description box below because I have so many different colors, not just brown and black and white ones, but other colors as well. The paper that I'm using for the list is actually like a weekly planner type of memo pad that I got from Lush Dive here in Oslo, but it's from Trolls Paper. It says Trolls Paper Stationery for Creators Plain Memo Pad. And I have one that is this weekly planner and then I have one that's like a daily planner. I really like them and the color was just perfect here and so instead of having the days, uh, I just put a number sticker on top of it. And so that's why my list has room for seven coffee shops. So there's no other reason for that. I could have done 10, but I did seven because it, it fit uh, on the weekly planner paper. And then for the menu on the other side, I wasn't sure exactly how I would do it because I wanted it to kind of match the left side and it to be kind of symmetrical. And so I just used another page from the memo pad but I flipped it over so that is just the plain color and so that way it's like the exact same color but with a coffee menu instead of a list of, of coffee shops. I don't know, I thought it was pretty clever. <laughs> like I said before these stickers are from the Hinoki into the cafe sticker set from notebook therapy as always you can get 10% off your order from notebook therapy with my code mochibujo10 i do have a few of these affiliate codes that i usually put in the description box of all of my videos so that if you are making a purchase and you want 10% off then you can use my code and then I earn a small commission and you get a discount. Of course, sometimes there are better discounts out there and especially with notebook therapy, usually the first couple of days after they release a new product, they will have a way better deal than the affiliate codes because you'll probably get like 15 or maybe even 20% off. But this came out a couple of weeks ago now at this point, so I don't think that you can get that discount anymore. I'm always super thankful to anyone who uses my affiliate codes because it does help me with my content creation and just, you know, staying alive <laughs> in this economy. <laughs> Another really great way to support me if you are so inclined is to go become a member of my Patreon page. There are both unpaid and paid memberships, so you can be a member for free, but obviously all of the digital, like the printables, the newsletters, and all of that stuff is only available to the paying members. I also have a store, like an online store with stickers, washi tape, and stuff. So that's also another great way to support me if you feel like it. But enough about that, let's go back to bullet journaling. 
It was quite fun to make this silly little spread that is only applicable in February because of the theme. Uh, although I think it would also be a good yearly spread to make probably. A list of your favorite coffee shops or your favorite restaurants or favorite stores or whatever. It could be fun to look back at in the future. So now we can move on to the very last spread that I'm gonna make in this video and this will be my first weekly spread of February. In January I have really enjoyed doing different weekly layouts for every week because I'm testing out new layouts, you know, like new ways to make my weeklies because this is a relatively new format for me. I mean, the last time I used a traveler's notebook was in 2019 and beginning of 2020. So it's been a while and I've been doing different layouts every week of January, but for the first weekly of February, I decided to go with the same type of layout that I did for the first week of January. Just because it was easy for me to set up, I quite enjoyed using it. It felt like a layout that was, you know, both easy to make but also easy to use, if that makes sense. I did mess up the dates because I started writing the dates on the right page first, which will be like the 1st through 4th of February, but then I started writing Monday and Tuesday because that just like felt right in my brain since I started from 1, <laughs> but obviously I should have started with Thursday, so I didn't make a big change i just kind of scribbled over it and it's fine it's not that big of a deal to me the numbers are correct after all like i mentioned in my january plan with me video this layout is inspired by natalie from blossom bujo i saw this layout on her instagram page and i wanted to try it for myself it's been working really well so on the left side, I have the first three days of the week. And then at the bottom, I have a list of tasks. The way that I use this type of layout is that on each day, like I write down any appointments, events, or tasks that I know will have to be done on that specific day. So for example, if there's a bill that needs to be paid by that date or a dentist appointment or a dinner plan or something like that. But on the tasks list, I write down tasks that needs to be done that week. So for example, maybe one week I'm working on designing new stickers or I'm working on printables for my patrons or maybe I need to like film and edit a video or two, just stuff like that that will take more than one day to do. I put those in the tasks list, like the weekly tasks. And a lot of these tasks are also on the monthly list of tasks because they are these like large tasks that I need to do each month and then I kind of move them into whichever week they need to to go into. I also have a section for like daily goals and this is something that I also got from Blossom Bujo. I don't know if she uses it the same way that I do but I like to think of like one thing that I would like to accomplish each day Maybe it is to finish a video. Maybe it is to pack all unfulfilled orders in my shop, or maybe it's um, doing laundry, just something like that. It doesn't have to be a, a big thing. It's just a fun little thing. You can see that I'm using a lot of my own stickers here. These are also from the sticker sheet that I made for my patrons this month. If you join my patron before the end of January, I will send these out in a pretty little beige envelope. More about that on my Patreon page. And uh, that's it for the setup. Now let's take a look at all of the spreads again so you can see them all together as a cohesive theme. My desk was super messy at the end of this and you can see the mess in the background here too, like in the shots. There was just stickers and ephemera everywhere. <laughs> But that just means that I got really into it and I was really creative and <laughs> just, you know, got to work with with everything that I have. And it also means that there's a lot left for the other spreads I'm gonna make throughout February, like all the other weeklies and stuff like that. Speaking of weeklies, I think I've been pretty good at making reels over on Instagram for all the weeklies that I did for January. So I'll try to keep that up for February as well because I think it's really fun to make little videos like that. And I think you guys, at least you seem to like them as well. <laughs>
hopefully I will be healthy soon and not be sick anymore. That would be amazing. So I hope this cold passes quickly. I've been sick for about a week now and it's, uh, it's getting a little bit annoying. <laughs> There is so much to do, you know, I can't take this long of a break without things starting to fall apart. But anyway, um, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you watched it all the way to the end, be sure to put a coffee emoji in your comment to let me know. And let me know if you have a favorite beverage to get at a coffee shop, whether it's like a matcha latte or a, a tea, like a London Fog maybe, or cappuccino, or yeah, like what's your go-to order? Mine is probably an oat milk latte, pretty basic, usually a double. That always makes me feel good. Maybe I'll take you along to some of the coffee shops that I visit in February. And if you live in Oslo and you have suggestions for like your favorite coffee shops, then pop them in the comment section below and I can check them out if I haven't already. Be sure to click the like button on this video and also subscribe to my channels if you want to see more videos like this. I post a video every week, more or less. Big shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. And uh, I guess that's all. I hope you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.